absolute privilege to uh, talk with you guys about what I love the most. And this, 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 what I'm going to talk to you guys about this morning really is what my heart longs for and desires for and what I believe every human longs for and desires for. Um, and that's actually not worship. <laughs> you know, I actually don't love worship, but I love Jesus. And because I love Jesus and I'm in love with him, I just can't stop singing about him. I can't stop worshiping about him. And that's why in the bathrooms I have this normal thing. I'll just bring it up. But I have this thing where as I'm uh, cleaning the toilets, I prophesy over the toilets. (laughs) God told me, he was like, I want you to start prophesying over these toilets and start saying, when somebody sits down on this toilet, they're going to have an encounter with the face of God. So, so I just get my little, whatever that thing is, I don't know, the toilet cleaner. I'm just like, God, I just thank you so much, Lord, that whoever sits down on this toilet is going to encounter your face. Because I want to be able to come alive wherever I am, no matter what I'm doing, no matter what my occupation is. You know? And if I, know, I know that if I can come alive in, in any moment, in any place, then I I can live fully alive wherever I go. And and to me that's that's one of the ways that I, I worship is I acknowledge him in that place. And Joe asked me to talk about uh, worship today and honestly I feel like it's so oh, I don't even know it's almost weird, you know, it's almost weird talking about worship to me because I feel like I'm only scratching the surface. You know, you, you guys you guys know what I'm saying? It's like Like, God knows all about worship, and he's been doing that for eternity. And for me to actually talk about it almost feels like, wow, really? Like, this is such a blessing. It's such a privilege, you know? It's just like, God, help me. Show me me more, you know? And so I kind of want to just take you guys on a journey on what worship, growing in worship, and and, uh, growing in my heart, my love for the Lord look like. I'm going to share with you guys some encounters I've had, some stories, and a lot of uh, Bible verses. We're going to go through a lot of Bible verses today. Is that okay? Yeah, I love the word. So, um, yeah, when I was, I think I came to this church when I was like, uh, I would say about 15, 16, something like that. I got saved when I was 13, and I actually came with the Christian Surfers group. You guys remember them? And uh, that's actually where I started to lead worship and somebody, I've always loved to sing. So singing was just a, a normal thing for me. Like in elementary school, I would sing so much that the teachers would, would like, I would, I would look up and then everybody would be staring at me because I didn't notice I was singing the whole time. And it was so loud. You know, it's like it was always in me to like want, want to sing. And then I'd get in trouble, be like, shh, like <laughs> you're singing too much. You know, and I, I just never noticed it. And, you know, it was always just like, oh, I just like to I just like to sing, you know, it was just a normal thing. And then uh, my cousin, Ricky Anderson, just pointed out, like, you know what? Like, uh, um, you, you have a voice. You know, like, he just pointed something out. You have a voice, and I think you should be on worship team. And I was like, oh, no, no way. And long story short, I ended up going for it, and I ended up just loving to lead. Like, I just loved um like directing my heart towards God in worship. And then that moved from, you know, leading uh, worship in my youth group to leading worship in T-Hop. And then T-Hop is really where I felt like my love for worshiping the Lord just exploded because we started doing this thing called spontaneous worship. Spontaneous worship is just singing about whatever the God, God is putting on your heart, you know. And then I was just like, whoa, I've never, like, seen this before. We could just spontaneously just sing about whatever the Lord is showing us right now. And I just like fell in love with that, you know, Uh, as just, just being on a team with people who, who just love singing about the Lord. And it just turned into this beautiful thing that cultivated um, this desire uh, for, for uh, wanting to just uh, sing about whatever the Lord is, is on, you know, and um, kind of along in that, uh, that season, uh, I've noticed that, you know, and I also started singing on stage and doing a lot of worship, and I was doing it a lot. Um, this is around, you know, 16, 17. I was just doing a lot of worship uh, here at Coast, and, 
you know, I got started getting really good at uh, doing spontaneous worship, you know, and people would start coming up to me and, and being like, like, Anthony, you got to go up and you got to do that spontaneous thing again. You know, just, woo, just go up and, wow, yeah, woo, Lord, you know, just start singing about whatever the Lord's putting on your heart and then just get the room to blow up through spontaneous worship, you know. And, you know, it just, it started to create this thing in me where I actually felt like my identity started to get caught up in what I did. And, and I, I, I remember the Lord pulling out, like, touching, uh, touching my heart and being like, hey, there's actually something in you that says, like, you have to be able to perform well in order to, to feel like you're doing well in life. And you're actually getting your identity from what you're doing. You're getting your identity from, from your gift. And, and I was like, oh, my gosh, well, I never, I never want that, you know. I never wanted, want that to be how I worship. And I really felt like the Lord was saying um, to take a break. So long story short, um, I wasn't, like, burnt out or anything, but I decided that I didn't want the stage to be where I get my identity from. And I didn't want my gift to be where I got my identity from. So the Lord said, I'm, I'm going to uh, take out Anthony, the worship leader, and I'm going to put in Anthony, the son. And how many of you guys know that the best place to worship is when you worship from a place of royal identity? When you worship from a place of knowing that you are a son, you are a daughter. Because when you don't and you're, you're always stuck in, in, am I worthy? I'm an orphan, am I rejected? It's really hard to worship. It's really hard to give him that praise and acknowledge him. Um, and so I just wanted to go after that with the Lord, and I really felt like God called me to it. So I went on, dude, I, when the Lord said, like, take a break, I didn't know that it was going to be like five years. <laughs> you know, yeah. there was so much going on in my heart that the Lord needed to take out, and it took five years for, for me to actually um, get to grow in my identity as a son and him as a loving father. So in that process, I went to Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry for three years. Woo! Yeah. And uh, so uh, real quick, I'm going to talk a little bit about Bethel. I'm going to talk a little bit about my encounters that I've had uh, at Bethel and stuff like that. But I just want to say that because um, I got a lot of freedom when I, when I went there. But I just want, want to say that Bethel did not transform me. Jesus transformed me. And I'm not here to preach Bethel. I'm here to preach the kingdom. So when I talk about this, I'm not saying, you know, you know Bethel's the, the way to go or anything like that, you know. It's just what God used. And I even remember when I went to Bethel, God was like, hey, Anthony, you actually don't need this place. But it could be a gift. And for you guys, you actually don't need a conference. You don't need the next best sermon. You just need the Lord. He's going to get you there wherever you, when, when, like he has a million different ways to get you where he, you need to go. And for me, he used that church. And uh, so I got to that church <laughs> and immediately I realized how caught up my identity was in worship because I applied for the worship team. And, and if you can imagine, Bethel worship is like you know, one of the best teams you can, you can get on, and the students apply for it all the time, and I didn't get on, and, you know, I, I remember applying for it, not getting on, I got really bummed, and I just remember, like, always feeling like when I was in school and worship was going on, I remember always feeling like I needed to go to the front, because I was like, that's where the glory is, that's where the presence is, you know, and then uh, I would see people, uh, worship and sing spontaneously to the Lord. And I, I would, in my heart, I'd be like, I can do that. Oh, I can do that. It was just this like really judgy thing that just popped up in my heart that said like, 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 oh my gosh, like, how come I'm not there? How come I'm not up there with those people? You know, like, why am I, you know, I can do that, that kind of whole thing in my heart. It just felt like my heart was hard. And I just remember I could not feel the presence of God at all. It was crazy, like, for the longest time. And I just started to notice that the Lord would say, Anthony, I want you to start walking towards the back of the room. And this is where my, my journey just started happening, is I just started going slowly more and more and more to the back of the room because I thought the presence is in the front, right? <laughs> you know? 
And I just remember the more and more I stayed hidden and, and that I'd go all the way to the back of the room, I'd feel his presence so strong. And it was like he was just saying, like, it's no matter where you are, Anthony, you can find me. Like, I'm here in the, in the places you're not expecting. I'm not here up in the front. I'm here, like, showing you that, that I'm in the corner of the room. But are you able to, to find me in the moment? You know, and so it was like this, this crazy, crazy thing where all of a sudden I started experiencing God in these places, in the secret places, instead of the wide open public spaces of God. And um, so I just love, I love uh, the secret place for that reason, is I really feel like um, my best moments of encountering the Lord has been in the secret place. Just, just closing my door and just saying, like, Holy Spirit, how much do you love me? Or like, Holy Spirit, can you touch me right now? Can you reveal more of your nature to me in this moment? And I just started realizing that I, c- I just come alive. I just come alive during those moments. There's nothing else that makes me come alive more than the face of God. And that's what I actually believe worship is. It's his face. It's the pursuit of his face. So I asked, I've been asking the Lord because uh, uh, Joe has been, you know, he asked me like, hey, like, like you should talk about what you feel like worship is. And um, to be kind of... Um, to make uh to make it a little short, but um I I've been asking the Lord, Lord, what does worship look like? Like what is is worship? You know, because there's all these beautiful definitions. And I remember one of the things that the Lord showed me is like uh I as I was pressing in, and I've been pressing in for a while, just asking the Lord, like, what is worship? And I really felt like he said, Worship is divine focus. And I was like, oh, worship's divine focus. That's, that's good. Like, what does that mean? You know, just pressing in for more and more of those things. And then a couple m- months later, after I'm just continuing to con- uh, ask the Lord, like, what's, what is worship? I felt like he said, worship is my face. And then he said, put those two things together. Worship is my face. Because worship really is just any time that you turn the affections of your heart towards him. And any time that you do that, you're coming face to face with the Lord. And I've noticed that every time that I actually go in the secret place and come face to face with the Lord, anxiety would just disintegrate before me. And when I went to Bethel for three years, I had extreme, like, and I'm talking about extreme anxiety, like nonstop, every day, heart beating out of my chest, felt like I couldn't even go to sleep at night type of thing. And it was, it was, it was crazy, a crazy season that I went to, but I remember that every time I go to the secret place and I would seek the face of God, I would, all of that would just start to die down. And all the fear, all the insecurity that was building up in me would start to leave as I encountered the face of the Father. And so this is why I'm, I'm talking about this today is because I love the face, the face of God. So if you can uh, turn with me to Exodus 19, verse 16. I think they actually have it. Um, they might have it. Uh, yeah, there it is. So this is uh, the story of Moses. How many of you guys love the story of Moses? Now, uh, you know, I was kind of thinking, like, who, oh, who should I talk about, you know, when it comes to worship? I love Moses and just his journey with the Lord. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, um, Well, I'm going to give you a little context first, is that uh, right here in chapter 19, we actually see the Israelites, and the Israelites are coming to the mountain uh, because they're seeing all these lightnings, they're seeing all these, the the thunders, they're seeing uh, God show up in like a mighty way, and and this is um, kind of the encounter that, that, they're, that they're seeing. So it says, then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings, and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the trumpet was very loud, so that all the people who were in the the camp trembled. So real quick before I keep going, here's a little tool for you guys. As you guys read the Bible, like you, you really need to let it play out visually for you. Because a lot of times what happens is it just becomes so mundane to us, you know, 
And, and this is actually what happens in worship, is we walk into the room, worship's playing, and we go, I heard that song, I read that verse, that, patr- that pastor's preached that, that preaching before, and it just becomes boring, and we wonder why it becomes boring, and it's because we're actually not seeking after an encounter. But the encounter actually is the thing that transforms us. And we're not actually engaging and leaning into what God's doing because we have this thing that goes, I've seen it before, so there must not be anything more in this for me. But the truth is, is that God's not the boring ones. We're the boring ones. <laughs> God's not boring. You are, you know, and and it's but because because we're not leaning in. So I want to I just want to say real quick. That when you actually when I'm reading this, when we're reading through this together, allow this to play out visually for you. Like this is a, a, a mountain. This is like Lord of the Rings with like. Like, have you ever seen, seen Lord of the Rings with all the crazy, poof, the fire and the smoke and everything? And you're just like, dang, that's crazy. Frodo just went to the top of that thing. You know, it's just like, you're always, you, you know, you watch those movies and you're like, that's insane. But Mount Sinai has nothing compared to any Hollywood movie. Like, this is crazy what happens to Moses and, and these people. Like, like, can you imagine seeing lightning and swirling around a mountain with fire like that's crazy so then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and the sound of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the cr- the camp trembled and it's like yeah i would tremble too especially if i heard a crazy trumpet sound like that And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like a smoke of a furnace. And the whole mountain quaked greatly. Like just imagine what you would do in that moment if you're seeing all of that. The earth was quaking and shaking and the Lord is moving, like his presence is, is manifesting all around you. Verse 19, and when the blast of the trumpet sounded long, sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and answered him by voice. Then the Lord came down, the Lord came down upon, upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain. And Moses went up. I love this story um, because it reminds me that there was only one person that went to the mountain. And everybody else saw the lightning, saw the thunderings. And it makes sense, right? Because God said, nobody can see my face and live. So Moses knew that. He said, Moses knew that nobody can see the face of God that lived. But there was something so, like, I think we have to, something should provoke us to go, what is it that possessed Moses to actually go, I might die, but this is worth it. Hungering after God with all my heart is worth it. Even if the whole crowd is staying back, God only needs one person to change the world. God only needs one person to encounter and change his life forever. And when I read this story, it reminds me that when I walk into a room and worship's going on, and it reminds me that I have to press in. Like, because this one life is all I got. (laughs) And when I get to eternity, and eternity is all worship. All of eternity is worship that we're just and we're that we're just wrapped up in, but I get to create such a powerful history with the Lord right now that I'm going to enjoy for all of eternity. So what does that tell me? That means that I can't just be okay with the promise of getting to heaven one day, and some people are just okay with with just getting to heaven one day, and that's it. That's good enough for me. But I would like to implore you to search out the word of God, to search out his voice, to actually see that there's always more for you. And that 
you actually can live this life encountering the face of the Father every day. And when you do that, you realize you come alive like nothing else can make you come alive. Nothing else can make you come alive like the face of God. Uh, one thing uh, along those lines, have you guys know what, um, I really don't know how I'm going to, I'm going to try to explain this, but you guys ever like drive in a car <laughs> and as you're like driving from one place to another place, you just notice like you get out of your car and before you know it, you're kind of like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize I was like driving or like, because you're so in autopilot mode that you just kind of like something just, it's this pretty astounding thing about our makeup, right? Like we're kind of designed to like be in this place where we just go into autopilot. Like, you know, it takes, it, it, I heard that it takes, is it 21, 28 days to make a habit? 21, 20, like that's pretty fast, you know? That's pretty fast to like create a habit. Like there's something in us that, that like, we could create like an autopilot thing inside of us really quickly, you know? So I've had times where I'm driving my car and I'm like, whoa, how did I get here? <laughs> you know? And like, I do, it, I do it with other things, you know, you could do it with sports or whatever. But one thing that the Lord actually started to show me that I have been doing, um, not recently, but, but a uh, long time ago before, is that I would actually walk into um, times of worship and I'd actually go into autopilot mode because I would, I would, I would think like, like, oh man, like I've heard this before. Like I've done this, like, oh, God's here again, you know? And it's just kind of like my, my makeup would just kind of like turn into like this thing where I didn't really have to lean in to him, you know? But there's actually one thing that we're, there's only one thing that we're actually responsible for, and that's for finding his face in the room. So I have this uh, quote from Bill Johnson. I actually wrote it in my, um, my Bible, it's one of my favorite quotes. He says, there is nothing worth more on this earth than encountering his manifest presence and responding to the invitation to know and to be known by him. It is what we were made for, what we were saved for, and the only thing that will satisfy the deepest longings of our hearts. The only thing that will satisfy the deepest longings of our hearts is the face of God. So if you can just turn with me to Psalms um, 27. Or I could just go ahead and, and read it. They're pretty short. Psalm 27, verse 8 says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me. Answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. It was the, like you see even in the Psalms, and you read it all over the Psalms, like God is always inviting David to, to seek his face. There's, and you just, you just kind of read it everywhere he goes that David has such a pleasure in intentionally seeking out the beauty of God. Like it's, uh, and it's, that's, why, that's one of the reasons I, I just love David is he was so intentional with just seeking out God's beauty. Like, anybody can, like, you know, go to a mountain, pretty much, or, like, see a sunset and be like, wow, that's beautiful. But not everyone could actually dive deep into the nature of God and be like, oh, my gosh. Like, who you are is greater than anything I've ever seen. And that's what David tasted of. That's what caused him to go in verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. You see, I think that David would just got obsessed, obsessed with the presence of God, so obsessed to the point where nothing else matters, because he realized there's only one thing that, that's going to satisfy me on this earth, and that's his presence. And you read in Psalm uh, 24, verse 6, um, this is the God, this is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. I believe that this is a generation that God is raising up, Ge a generation that is wholehearted, fully focused, so passionate 
to say there's one thing that that's my prior priority, and that's seeking the face of God. I had um, um, so kind of uh, backtracking from from this to uh, my my story. Um, I remember I had this uh, this moment in my second year of school. Um, my second year of school, I. I was uh, applying for worship team again, you know, because I really, I really wanted to, to be on again. And I was like, my heart's a little bit better now; it's way better, you know. And um, uh, I would love to get on worship team. And I remember I was uh, in my in second year of school. You're actually in front of all the Bethel worship leaders. So like, you know, Brian Johnson, Callie Hogenthal, all the all the people that are singing these songs, like they're actually like watching you <laughs> as you're like uh, as you're um, uh, singing your song. So you go up, you sing a song for 30 seconds, and if pretty much, if they feel peace on it and they, they think you're good, you know, um, you'll get on the team. And the, But the team is very, it's very small. It's very short. It's not like a lot of people get on the team. It's only like very few get on, so it's kind of rare. Out of 800 people who apply, you know, only like 20 make it, <laughs> you know. So I remember... Um, and this was this really was a life changing moment for me, is I I remember when I went up on the when I was getting ready to go up stage I was in line I remember just feeling so anxious and so overwhelmed like and I'm just like God why am I feeling so anxious you know and just just thinking about how I'm gonna go up and do a thirty second song and all these things of what if I don't get on what if they don't like it you know all these things and. And then I just remember as I was just sitting there, I just said, like, Lord, what, is, what, are, what are you saying right now? And I just remember so clearly. It was like one of those moments where, like, his voice just pierced through. Where he said, he said, Anthony, do you want to be a good worship leader or do you want to be a son? And I just, like, lost it in that moment because I realized, oh, God, that there's, there really is only one thing that I want, and it's just to be a son. And then he said, good, because all I want is, is sons. All I want is sons and daughters. That's all I want. I don't want good worship leaders or preachers or teachers or people that can use their, their, their skills in an amazing way. I just, want, I just want my children. And I just remember all the anxiety uh, died down. All the, all the anxiety left me in that moment. And I just became even more obsessed with just going after just being a child in his presence and, and just going, going back to my room and just worshiping him about everything. And so I, got, I really just, I got into this thing where I would literally just worship about anything. And because I was like, God's face is everywhere. And oh, one thing I forgot to mention, this is so cool. It's, the word presence in the Old and New Testament actually means face. So if you can translate the word presence to the word face, everywhere that you see the word presence, you can go, oh, my gosh, his face is, is here. His face is present. So when I'm in the secret place worshiping, I'm constantly stopping and, and looking for where, where, is, where is your face, God? You know, so there's these things uh, that I would start doing where I'd go in my room <laughs> and I... And I would just start singing about the little, the dust particles that I would see through the lights in my room. <laughs> and, th and then I'd start singing about my bed through the Holy Spirit, you know. And just like different things, just finding him in everything. Because if you find him in everything, you won't miss him in anything. Oh, did you guys hear that? If you find him in everything, you won't miss him in anything. So that's why it's so important to find him in everything. Because there's not one place that he's not. So you, you guys actually have access to tap into the Lord in a hostile work environment and actually tap into peace. You can actually tap into the roots of joy and pull on that root system of, of joy and actually come alive in any moment because he's everywhere. So it was, it was, it really, God really was uh, showing me that. So I just be like, Lord... I thank you that you're laying in my bed with me. I thank you that you're everywhere with me. Just like the covers over me, I feel you everywhere. 
I feel you all around me. Jesus, you're astounding. I can feel you in my room right now. You know, it didn't have to rhyme, but I would just start singing about random little things, you know? And, like, I would start taking, um, uh, can you pass me that water bottle? This is going to be really fun. So uh, this is going to be really fun for you guys. So this is a questionnaire. So is Jesus this water bottle? No. <laughs> no, he's not. Don't get weird. <laughs> People are like, maybe. We're prophetic. We're spontaneous. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did Jesus create this water bottle? Did God create this water bottle? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, no, maybe, yeah. Or did Jesus create a human that created this water bottle? Did he create the palmers in this water bottle? Did he create the design of this water bottle? Did he create uh, the way that, um, just the way that it looks? And, like, he created a human who created this water bottle, right? And, and I would... So, therefore, if God created a human that created this water bottle, then, therefore, his nature can be found in the water bottle. But he's not the water bottle. Just to, just to make it clear, I don't want to hear anybody come up to me, did you just say God's a water bottle? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> but God's nature can be found in it because he created a person who created it. And the reason is because I would look at a water bottle and I would just look at it and just be like, wow, that reminds me of me. You know, like, God, you always fill me up. Oh, you always fill me up. You're, you are the water that fills my soul. You are my everlasting life. You are the fountain of wells that run dry. So what would I do with that? You always fill me till I overflow. You're the one that I want to get to know. Everywhere I go, you're continually filling me. In the night when I feel so dry, I feel your water of life crashing over me. Jesus, you're crashing over me. And I just come alive singing about a water bottle because his nature is found in it. You can come alive just by hanging out with your friend in the morning and, and having a cup of coffee. And you see the steam rise up out of the, co the cup of coffee, and you go, wow, that steam reminds me of Holy Spirit. That's crazy. And then you put another cup of coffee next to that other cup of coffee, and you see two, two little vapors rise up out of the coffee, and they mingle into one. And you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm... To one, I'm one with the Lord. And then you just get wrecked because you're like, whoa, like, dude, I am, I'm finding God in everything, you know? You're my caffeine in the morning. I feel you every day, no matter what other people say. You're the one that lifts me up. You're the one that overflows my cup. You're my coffee in the morning. If you find him in everything, you won't miss him in anything. <laughs> I'm getting wrecked right now. <laughs> There's not one place that he's not. The bike rides with your friends on a sunset. And you just feel his presence. What do you do with that? You lean in. You stop. And you look for his face. <laughs> You look for his face, and you realize you're alive. <laughs> you're not just barely breathing. It's kind of like the Matrix. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Matrix, but <laughs> it's like Neo takes this this uh, this this pill because this guy asks him, like, "Hey, you want to? Do you want to see reality for what he truly is?" And then he, he's like, I, yes, I do. And he takes the pill and he comes alive and he's just like, oh my gosh. Like, he just, it's like you see this whole new world. You see what you've never seen before. And you realize that you were living in a fake reality the whole time. And you actually just came into something new. 
and you realize the reason for you were born that you were born for and and for all of us this isn't just for me i really believe that what we are born for is to seek the face of god everywhere we go and when we do that it transforms us moses was completely transformed by the face of god because one man chose to go to the mountain and 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 wasn't afraid to die and because of that his whole life was changed let's go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and read um something real quick vahid it's okay i don't i didn't give you the scripture verse so revelation 1 9 through 10 This is John's vision. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of, of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice. As a... Uh, as of a trumpet saying, I am the, uh, oh, am I reading the right one? Oh, I'm sorry. Matthew 10. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's verse, um, verse 14. His hair and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. I don't know if you guys ever, th like, al this is the, allow your, your mind to play out visually for you again. I don't, I don't know if I'd be able to stare at a guy with the eyes of flame of fire. <laughs> like, it's it's kind of funny because there's the there's the beauty of the Lord of seeing His face, but there's also the fear of the Lord, where it's like, you, like there's like there's you know there's two. It's it's like, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful, and then there's like, oh my gosh, am I gonna live after seeing this? Because you read in the Bible that there's both. There's people that see the face of God, and they're like oh my gosh, you're so wonderful. This is awestruck. Like, and then you, you see other people that are just like, how did we live through that? You know, it's, it's pretty crazy. And like, I can't even imagine staring at a God with the eyes of flame of fire. Like, it's just crazy. Refined, his feet were like fine brass as is refined in, in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand and seven stars out of his mouth when a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was like the sun shining in all of its strength. Wait, what? Like, it's, his countenance was not just like the sun. It was the sun shining in all of its strength. Like, I, when I stare at the sun, I'm already like, oh my gosh, like that's bright. I can't stare at that. But in all of its strength, like, oh my goodness. There's something about his presence that is just so captivating. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I kind of like how um, he, he, God shows up and says, do not be afraid, because he knows there's, there's something to be afraid of. <laughs> you know, it's the presence. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Um, I brought. I wanted to to read this first because I wanted to point out that the John John was not the same man that left that encounter after seeing the face of God. And every time we come and see into the presence, the face of God, there's always something in us that dies. And John didn't die, but something in him did. And he was completely different, completely transformed after this moment, which is why these encounters are so important, is because God just loves to, to, to chip off the, the dead vines that bear no fruit. I love the, the um, somebody, I, I don't know who it is, but somebody, uh, I heard this story about a sculptor. The sculptor, it, he had like a marble, and like the marble, he would like start, he would chip at the marble uh, to create these beautiful, elegant, like, uh, pieces of art, right? So, like, there's this one that he made, and he made, like, an elephant or something. I think it was an elephant. And some guy said, 
how is it that you could do that and then just and make an elephant and make it look that good, that real, you know? And he said, oh, it's easy. I just carve off the pieces that don't look like the elephant. <laughs> you know? It's like, wow, thank you. <laughs> but that's what God does. When we come into the presence of God, he chips off all the things that doesn't look like Jesus. All the things, fear, anxiety, stress, worry, all of those things, he chips them off when we come into the presence of God to there's one thing that matters, one thing that we're living for, and that's him and him alone. Moses said, I don't care if your presence goes, if, I don't care if you, you send us to the wilderness and make everything success, successful for us. There's only one thing that I want. It's your presence. If your presence doesn't go with us, I ain't going. What would it be like if we were just so stubborn, so stubborn, guys, that we just didn't change the subject? We just camped around the presence and kept the main thing the main thing and stopped making it about this type of worship song, this type of personality type, this type of teaching, and just started making it about the one thing that David longed for. I think we could change the world. I do. I really do. All these people that, you, that, that I'm reading about, they changed the world because they had an encounter. And they were transformed by their encounter. They probably sang about coffee, too. Probably. No, maybe it was wine. <laughs> so... During my journey of going after uh, just being a son, which how many just, how many guys just feel like already in your heart, like, oh my gosh, that's me. I just want to live my whole life just as a son or a daughter for the king, right? Like there's, there's just nothing better than knowing that you're his child. There's so much purpose in it. During this journey of just really going after these things, I really began to go after these encounters. And... <laughs> This one's going to be, um, are you guys okay? I'm reading a lot of Bible verses. Are you guys, you guys good? By the way, always have the Bible in print. I just want to say that. It's good to have it. It's good to have it on your phone. But there's just something about having it in print that just makes it so much more lively. That was for free. Malachi, so, <laughs> um, whoa, this is so, this is going to be so fun. So this might, um, yeah, freak you guys out a little bit, but that might be good. Um, yeah, I remember reading this verse and just wanting um, deeper encounters with the Lord. Because I, I would hear people talk about all these crazy encounters. You know, you guys ever hear about all these manifestations that people, you know, have like, I got pushed through the ground and the Lord shocked me and I was like, -ba 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 -ba. and then lightning struck me. And then, you know, you just hear all these crazy things or like from people where they had these amazing encounters, right? <laughs> you know, it's like I, I was really, and I am really hungry for encounters of the Lord. And I didn't, I just, I just remember going through this thing where it was just like, I need to go after this. Like, something in me needs to change. It's, it's like I can't afford to not go after um, God and, and encountering his presence, his manifestation. I need, like, a fresh touch from him. And I remember reading Malachi 3.16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So I'm going to see that one more time. The, then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. If you ever want to change the atmosphere in, in the room, all you got to do is start talking about the Lord. You just, all you got to do is just, talk about how you honor and fear him and all of a sudden the Lord goes he shows up and he starts writing down about what you're talking about and then he starts moving in the room and the atmosphere starts to shift that's worship 
you just start talking about what he's doing, and it doesn't matter what other people are, are doing in the room. The presence is there. He's writing that book. He's writing down those moments when you're in, when you're in your bedroom alone, and you're saying, God, come. In worship atmosphere, the atmosphere must change. It must, because it's his presence that draws near. So I remember reading this on my, my couch when I was in Redding, California, my second year of school, and just being so overcome, just being like, oh, I just want to go to a restaurant and just talk about Jesus and just see him show up, you know, just so excited, you know, the whole finding him in everything that we've been talking about, right? So um, I just remember I called my, my friend Josh. He was upstairs sleeping. I was like, hey, Josh. He's like, yeah, what's up? I was like, dude, let's go to a restaurant. It's just, I just want to talk about Jesus. <laughs> Let's just go, just find a restaurant, and just talk about Jesus. And then I just shared with him this verse, you know, and everything. And he's like, let's do it. So we just took out uh, a time to just go talk about Jesus at a restaurant. And when that was normal, <laughs> to go to a restaurant, which now it's kind of opening back up. But I went to, um, I went to uh, Black Bear Diner in Reading, and we just sat down at this this little booth we were just sitting down and we were just talking and I just brought out this verse again and I started crying just being like Josh like when we talk about the Lord and how we honor and fear him he just shows up like isn't that crazy like like Josh we're going to be treated in heaven accorded accorded according to the conversations we have here on earth that's a good word According to the conversations we have here on earth, we're going to be treated in heaven. And he was just like, yeah, that's so amazing. And we just took time to just turn the affections of our heart towards him, which is worship. And we just acknowledged him for who he was, who he is. God, you're here. We know that you're here. And then the craziest thing started happening. So I just saw this one little bubble just start to flow, float right in front of me. And I was just like, who? Who's blowing bubbles? That's weird. You know, and we're all the way in the very back of the room. We're not even near the dishwashers, you know. So I was just like, that's very interesting, you know. And then the uh, all of a sudden, craziest thing happened. More bubbles started to float out of nothingness. Like literally just started to pop out of nowhere and float in front of me and my friend Josh. And, and we could see it like almost like coming from underneath the table and starting to float above the table. And we were just like, what? What's going on? So we started looking at all the booths, you know, to see like if there's bubbles coming from them. But it was only around our table. <laughs> and we were like, what is going on? So finally this, this, uh, this lady shows up, the, the waitress, she shows up. And she was like, hey, can I take your order and everything? And I was like, excuse me, ma'am, where are these bubbles coming from? And she was just like, she, was, she didn't even notice until I pointed it out. And then she was just like, what the? I have, I have no idea. And then, <laughs> and then you know, <laughs> and I just, I just started looking at Josh. I was like, dude, this is the Lord. Like, we just started freaking out. Like, he's showing up in bubbles. You know, just like, this is awesome. You know, so, so like, she runs to, like, the back to start talking to the dishwasher uh, the people who were talking, uh, doing the dishes, and then and then she was like, "Do you guys know where these bubbles com are coming from? Look over there!" And they all, all, you just see all of them like, like looking over and being like, "What is going on over there?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then and then she comes back. She's like, "I don't know what's going on. I'm just gonna take your order. I don't know where these bubbles are coming from." And then we're we're just like, "We know," you know. <laughs> it's just like getting wrecked. And then and then she goes all, all the uh, to these other tables that are right around us. And as she goes to these other tables, um, she starts asking them, do you guys know where these bubbles are coming from? And then one, uh, one table goes, we have no idea, but they didn't show up until those two got there. <laughs> 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 and they literally just started floating and floating and just wouldn't stop. And we just started laughing. We just started laughing hysterically about the bubbles. And we're just like, what is going on? This is weird, but amazing at the same time. You know, it, you know, and it, we just like started getting drunk and just, just from talking about the Lord, you know, 
And he viewed it as worship. He viewed it as those two people are honoring me and fearing me. They're leaning in. You guys have ever heard? I've heard people say, like, God does the 90%. He leans in for the kiss, does the 90%. All we need to do is the 10. He's already gone the 90. He's already leaning in for the kiss. All he's asking us to do is just lean in a little bit. And it's there. He's already done, done it. But what he's looking from us is, will you search for my face in the room? Will you find me in everything all around me? Because it's always there. Just not everybody goes after it. We get complacent. We get worried. It's really hard to pursue the face of God when you're worried. I've noticed. <laughs> I've have a, I have a lot of experience in that area. And I just can't afford it anymore. This is pretty cool. This last year, this is a cool little testimony. This last year was the one year that I, uh, that I went a whole full year without experiencing anxiety. It was huge for me. <laughs> Only took me 10 years. <laughs> but maybe it took me 10 years, so it would take someone else 10 days. And the breakthrough that I got would be the breakthrough that other people carry. That was just a side thing. I'm rabbit trailing. But, um... So <laughs> I just got even more obsessed with these encounters. Um, and what it got even crazier. So, like, I went to school. I started going to school. And then people, after, after my encounter, people, uh, um, oh, this, this, this is what happened. I went to one of my classes. This girl showed up. She said, hey, Anthony, I have, I have a word for you. And uh, it just sounds so weird, but I'm just going to say it. And I was like, okay. And I had my recorder out, and, she, and I still have it to this day. I still listen to it. She said, I feel like the Lord just wants me to tell you that it's not just bubbles. <laughs> and I'm like, what did you just say? And she has no idea. Only me and Josh know. Like, and, and my mentor. And they didn't tell anybody, you know. And she said that, and I just pretty much just dropped dead. And was like, I knew it. I knew it was the Lord, you know. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and I just got so rocked from that because I was like, God, that's your, your presence showed up in that way. I have no idea why. Like, why did he choose bubbles? I have no, like, in that moment, I was just like, I have no idea why. But I just knew that it was him. Like, and I was like, do you know, like, what, what you just said to me? And she was like, no, I have no idea. <laughs> you know, I was just like, oh, my gosh, you know. And then. People in my school started having the same encounters after I had that encounter. And people would start coming to me because they heard my testimony. And they'd be like, oh, my gosh. Like, um, we just had bubbles show up out of nowhere. Like, it was crazy. during wor And it would always happen during worship. Like, during the, the manifest presence of God, you know. And it was just, like, crazy. Like, the things that started happening. And um, what happened was... Um, uh, I looked up, I just typed in, like, what is the def, like, what is, like, the Christian, I don't remember, like, what, what, what is the meaning of having bubbles in life? I don't know. I looked up something. It was, like, a Christian dictionary or something, and it just said joy. Bubbles bring joy to children. Bubbles bring joy to life. Bubbles, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's it. God just wants to bring me joy. Like, it didn't look how I thought it would look, but it was so, it was so important the way he showed up in that way for me. And, and we, we all have an encounter waiting to happen. You, after you leave this place, you guys have an encounter with the God who creates bubbles waiting to happen, waiting for you to, to, to go with a friend on a walk and be like, can we just talk about Jesus? Could I just talk about what he's doing in my life? Could we just talk about his eyes burning like a flame of fire? Could we just talk about his nature? And then he shows up. And it may not be bubbles, but I guarantee you it will be something that makes you come alive. And that's what's most important. Because there's only one thing that will satisfy that, that deep longing in our hearts. And that's his face. 
And what's even more funny is when I came, when I left Redding, California, came here, I remember one of my first uh, uh, times of being back here, Joe uh, went to go pray for me in the back. And he's like, wow, I just got this picture and I just see bubbles <laughs> all around you. And I'm just like, it's following me. <laughs> you know, this is amazing. <laughs> So I have a thing with bubbles, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. This is pretty funny, huh? Yeah. Hmm. If we find you in everything, we won't miss you in anything, God. God, I just pray... that there wouldn't be one moment where we go, wow, you're not here. Because internally, we've built, we've cultivated such a powerful relationship with you that we know everywhere that we go, you're here. You're here, God. You're all around us. I want to take your faith word and shine it all around. Just tell me first to live it, Lord. And when I'm doing well, help me to never seek a crown. For my reward is giving glory to you. Just the voices. Let's just sing it out. Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I seek, and when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds in me. One more time, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, your You see, right when you turn your heart towards him, you realize he never left. Do you guys feel that as we sang that? He was there the whole time. All he was doing was leaning in, and all it took for us was just turn our hearts towards him. That's worship. You don't need a song. You don't need a guitar. It's the affections of your heart that goes, God, I want you. I surrender to you. I'm acknowledging your nature. I don't create a single thing as a worship leader. I don't. I just tap into a, a kingdom that's already been built. A kingdom that, that, that is not built with human hands. That's why so many church leaders burn out. They're trying to create something that already exists. But what if he's just saying, just lean into what's already been created? What if you actually don't need to do the hard work? You just walk in and it's free. So we're going to go through a time of worship, and I just want us to just sing that chorus just a couple times. And as we, as we do, we're just going to really just focus our heart and press in to the God, the God of beauty. So Jesus, we just thank you for who you are. We acknowledge your nature, God. We acknowledge, acknowledge that you are everywhere and all around us, God. There is not one place that you're not. That we can actually go into our room and start singing about water bottles, start singing about the random things that, that, that we see all around us because we can find your nature in it. 
and because we realize that there's there's only one thing that we truly desire that we long for and that's that's your eyes it's your smile it's seeing the kindness of your face god all eternity is worship and we just want to be wrapped up in it god wrapped in the how what it looks like to truly worship you in spirit and in truth